Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have definite integral from negative 1 to 2 of x over x plus 1 squared dx. And before you get started, if you want to try it on your own, I want to point out that this is an improper integral. Notice that negative 1 is not part of the domain of the integrand. It is discontinuous there, so you need to deal with it accordingly. And We've been focusing on the topic of improper integrals on my YouTube channel this week because it aligns with a lot of the curriculum in Calculus 2 classes this semester. So to begin, what do we do when we have an improper integral of this type? Often we classify this as type 2, where you have some limit of integration that does not uh, fall into the domain of the integrand. It makes it discontinuous. Well, we rewrite it using a limit. So I'm going to point out, since the integrand is discontinuous at x equals negative 1, I'm going to replace this negative 1 with a dummy variable. Usually we use t, and we're going to write it as the limit as t approaches negative 1. And then this is always tricky for some students to figure out from which side. It's from the right. Now, don't memorize. Just understand what's going on. This integral takes on the values from negative 1 to 2. So staying on that interval, the only way to approach negative 1 would be from the right side. Okay, so if your lower limit of integration is where the discontinuity is, you must approach it from the right. And then now we write our limits as going from t to 2, and then we have x over x plus 1 quantity squared dx. All right. So how to evaluate this integral? You have a couple options. If you look at the integrand and you're really fired up and you want to do partial fractions, go for it. That totally works. Let me show you something a little different, which is, I dare say, faster than partial fractions when you get comfortable with it. And I always show my class. They usually like it. Shout out to my mom who showed it to me for the first time when I was a young little calc student. So it only works, you know, if the numerator is off. Um, it doesn't match the denominator just by one little term. So what we're going to do is add and subtract 1. That way I can make the numerator match what's going on in the denominator. And I haven't done anything illegal, right? The math police are not going to come snatch me up. Hint, hint, check out my math police merch um, because this is just zero. So we've got x plus one and x plus one squared here and then minus one over x plus one squared. So I can split this now. This is the beauty of what we just did into x plus one over x plus one squared minus one over x plus one squared. Are we okay? Oh, good. And then now this will simplify. I can cancel, boop, boop. And then I just have 1 over x plus 1 minus 1 over, that's right, x plus 1 squared. And that's what you would get had you sat there and done partial fractions. Now, usually when I do this process, I don't write out so many steps. I just kind of do a lot of it in my head. I'll put maybe plus 1, minus 1, and then hop to here. And like I said, so when you get comfortable with it, you'll get really good. It'll save you time. Anyways, now let's rewrite our integrand using, this is the partial fraction decomposition that we found, the limit as t approaches negative 1 from the right, integral t to 2. You have to write all of that every step, okay? And then we have 1 over x plus 1 minus 1 over x plus 1 quantity squared dx. All right, now we can just integrate term by term. So we've got the limit, t approaches negative 1 from the right, no more integral sign. Antiderivative of 1 over x plus 1 is going to be ln absolute value x plus 1 minus, and then keep in mind, this right here is x plus 1 to the negative second power. So when we take an antiderivative, we add 1 to the exponent and then divide by it. So that's going to make this a positive now, 1 over x plus 1. And this is all going to get evaluated from t to 2. Good? Okay, now let's plug in our upper and lower limits. So limit t approaches negative 1 from the right. I'm going to have natural log of 3 plus 1 over 3 minus, 
And then let's put some extra parentheses. Natural log absolute value t plus 1 plus 1 over t plus 1. Okay, how are we doing up to here? Hopefully up to this point was pretty straightforward. Now evaluating the limit is where things get a wee bit tricky. So I'm not too concerned about these first two terms. They're just constants. So they're just going to stay as is. I'm trying to see what happens when t approaches negative 1 from the right. So t approaching negative 1 from the right means that the quantity t plus 1 is approaching 0, but through positive values, right, from the right-hand side. So what happens to our natural log function as the argument approaches 0 from the right? Do you remember your graph of natural log of x? I hope it's one that is burned in your brain because you need to call upon it to do limits like this, right? So I already know it's negative infinity because in my head I see this. This is very crude little graph of ln x, okay? And as the argument, as the argument's this stuff, inside approaches zero from the right, yep, the function approaches negative infinity. So all of this is going to negative infinity. All right, what about the next term here? So we established t is going to negative 1 from the right, so from values that are a little bit bigger than negative 1. So that means this denominator here is going to 0 from the right. But then what about that, that entire term then? So 1 over something getting very, very small that's positive is going to go to positive infinity, this whole thing goes to positive infinity. If you need to review your infinite limits, I'll link a video in the description that I have. So this is problematic. Why is it problematic? Because we have negative infinity plus infinity. That's an indeterminate form. Infinity minus infinity, but it's just rearranged. Negative infinity plus infinity is indeterminate. There's seven indeterminate forms, okay? And if you need a little review on that, I got another video for you. So I'll link that in the description as well. Whoa, nobody's cooperating with me today. So what do we do? Well, we can't do L'Hopital's rule on this kind of indeterminate form. L'Hopital's rule only applies when you have indeterminate forms of the type 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity. So we're going to need to do some further investigation and play around with these guys here. And most of the techniques that we rely on like, you know, multiplying by conjugate or something aren't going to work. So I'm going to try to get a common denominator and see if we can use L'Hopital's rule. But I want to make my life a little easier. I can redefine things and make a little bit of a substitution for simplicity purposes, okay, to simplify this process. So what we're going to do is substitute in, and this is where maybe it's something you wouldn't have thought of. We're going to substitute in x everywhere that we see t plus 1. And I'm just calling upon that. That way we can have plain old x here, x here. And then just be careful. As t approaches negative 1 from the right, that means x would approach 0 from the right. Okay, so we're going to rewrite the limit that way. And I'm only going to focus on these two terms here because I already know these are constants, okay? So let's just consider... The limit as x approaches 0 from the right of ln. I don't need to put absolute value anymore because this is going to 0 from the right, so I have no worries that this might be negative, plus 1 over x. Let me go back up so you're... So this is ln of x after my substitution plus 1 over x, okay? All right, so same thing is happening as in the previous step. This is going to negative infinity. This is going to positive infinity. So we have an indeterminate form. Let me get a common denominator. This is going to be the limit. X approaches 0 from the right. X times natural log of X plus 1 over X. Okay. Can I do L'Hopital's rule here? No. We have another problematic situation, but we can deal with it. Don't worry. X is going to 0 from the right. So that means this is going to 0. ln of x we established. As x goes to 0 from the right, this goes to negative infinity. 
Zero times positive or negative infinity is another indeterminate form. Oh no, what to do? So we're just gonna focus on that term right there. So here's like another limit within the limit. We're gonna look at what's the limit as x goes to zero from the right of x times ln of x, okay? And then I desperately am trying to do L'Hopital's rule. So I need to create either zero over zero or infinity over infinity. And when you have an indeterminate product, you never move the natural log, you move the other part of the product. So I'm gonna move x into the denominator. So this is the limit x goes to zero from the right of ln of x over one over x. Okay, so let's see. As x goes to zero from the right, the numerator is going to negative infinity, the denominator is going to positive infinity. They don't have to go to the same sign of infinity as long as we have two infinities. Like that one in the numerator, one in the denominator, Yay, we can finally use L'Hopital's rule. So we've got the limit, x goes to zero from the right, derivative of the numerator is one over x, derivative of the denominator is negative one over x squared. And then this will simplify. I'll have negative x squared over x, so this is just negative x. And then, whew, I can just plug in zero for x now and I get zero. So what does that tell me? Oh my God. So then, so this means the limit as x goes to zero from the right of x times ln of x plus one over x. Well, I just showed this term here goes to zero. So we have zero plus one, we have a positive constant over the denominator, which is approaching zero through positive values. That tells me, uh-huh, this entire expression is going to positive infinity. Whew, I know, I know. So back to the original limit that we were doing, okay? All together now, we have the limit, or we did. Perhaps you forgot. Um, as t approaches negative 1 from the right, ln of 3 plus 1 third minus ln, absolute value, t plus 1 plus 1 over t plus 1. Okay, and we just showed all of this here, which was the equivalent of this limit, if you'll remember, goes to positive infinity. So all of this goes to positive infinity. So what can we conclude about the overall limit? We have some constant minus positive infinity that will go to negative infinity. Whew, we made it. Which tells me this improper integral is divergent. Okay, I think you can wholeheartedly agree that the limit was not for the faint of heart and definitely the most difficult part of this problem. It involved you remembering your graph of natural log, um, several types of indeterminate forms, applying L'Hopital's rule, really um, infinite limits, manipulating all sorts of things. So it's a good review. You could put like this problem by itself on the test and see if everyone remembers their limit stuff from Calc 1. <gasps> I know. Anyways, that's it. How did you do? Did, did you get stuck? This limit was nasty. I haven't seen this nasty of one in an integration problem in a while. That's it, though. Don't worry. I'll do something a little more um, good feeling coming up soon, something a little more palatable. But just wanted to focus on improper integrals, since I know many of you are covering that topic in your courses right now. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and then follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. Thank you guys so much for your support. I love you all. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye.